Warm season native grasses provide a lot of benefits to producers, to landowners, to cattlemen. Every single producer can benefit from it, period. I mean, it's, it's that straightforward. We're gonna keep converting. That's our goal here, is to keep converting over to native warm season grass. We've made a lot of progress on native grass establishment management over the last 20 years, and we need to incorporate that into how we go about managing Missouri's farms and ranches. One of the barriers that, that we have seen historically with getting producers to put native grasses and forbs back on the landscape is that that, that land has had to been, be taken out of production for a period of years. Recent technologies and herbicide has allowed that process to, to, be, to be shortened quite a bit. It looks like we got a good kill here. Yeah. It, uh... Uh, the stand wasn't very good just due to the drought, but uh, it stooled pretty good when we mowed it the first time. Absolutely. And, and it's, it's, uh, we have high hopes for this cutting. We're converting to native warm season grasses and we're using a, a very common practice uh, that has been accepted of uh, planting a couple of cover crops, terminating the fescue with uh, glyphosate, uh, planting a summer annual crop, and maybe plant the warm season grass dormant or, or next, uh, next summer. It's been a tough year, but uh, I think this program is, is flexible enough yeah. to handle yeah. the, the bumps, you know. Absolutely. The Native Forge Initiative Program, you know, this cover crop was part of that contract, so it's actually a cost-shared practice. Um, and for two reasons. One is because it does provide excellent uh, site prep for the native warm season grass, but it also takes out that year of lost production, all of a sudden now we're probably producing more forage on this field than we would have if it was, if we went straight from fescue to warm season grass. So. There is basically one growing season where you're gonna have to uh, minimize the grazing to really let it get established. And of course that's all dependent on rainfall and everything else. It's looking pretty good. Yeah, for a second year stand, this is this is phenomenal. This is our goal. This yeah. is what we're going for, and this is uh, this is what we hope to see up at the North Place that we uh, looked at this morning with the uh, yeah same same program, same, same protocol. Pro right. Um, it, we should have a similar results. Yeah. The understory is still pretty open, allowing for our grass and birds to still utilize it while producing, you know, a lot of forage for, for the cattle. Dana Ripper. I am the co-founder of the Missouri River Bird Observatory. We do a lot of bird surveys on grasslands and wetlands throughout the state of Missouri and surrounding states. I'm Steve Klubine. I'm a retired grassland biologist that now practicing what I preached for 34 years and found it's uh, easier and more profitable than I ever said it would be. This was burned this year. And when you burn one that most of the grazing focuses on the burn, not the unburned on the other side of the trail. And that creates openness on the ground. Notice we got bare ground here and vertical growth, travel lanes for critters to move through. And fescue acts very, very differently, right? It's very different because the leaves don't just grow vertically, they grow almost laterally. So the travel lanes are just almost wiped mm -hmm. out. Nothing here co-evolved with fescue. It's not useful to our native wildlife. It is basically impossible for a brood of small quail to get through and to use. Um, and so as in contrast to our, our bunch grasses and our forbs that are in our native prairies where there's like these little pathways. So our birds need that, that structure that includes things like bare ground and not a mat of, of fescue filaments taking up the, the whole earth. I bought this 120 acres after I retired and I converted half of it to native grass 
and with the idea that I might lease it for grazing, but then uh, I uh, ended up buying my own stalkers. I don't have cow-calf operation. That native grasses had a role in grassland management in Missouri, that they uh, benefited the uh, stock and animals uh, that in grazing in the summer, and that it could be profitable. Overall in North America, we've lost about 30% of our birds in general across the continent. And of that big loss of about a third of our avifauna in North America, uh, grassland birds have been hit the hardest. We've seen losses overall as a guild of prairie birds in the 50% range. So for example, here in the state of Missouri, we had 12 to 14 million acres of native tall grass prairie. We now have less than 60,000 acres of unplowed prairie. That alone, you're of course gonna dramatically reduce numbers because you've reduced habitat to less than 1% of what it originally was. But producers like Steve and these folks that are, are really trying to restore our prairies while making a living and therefore like making it long-term feasible, that is a hopeful thing. Nice to be able to do something that benefits all those flora and fauna of grasslands. There's a 40 or 50 species of plants that grow here from flowering plants. They're good for pollinators, but also produce seeds and insects for wildlife. So it's a win-win thing in that respect. You don't need to be a conservationist per se to integrate warm season grasses in your, in your system. The benefits are just so wide ranging, it's, it's really hard to, to put just a dollars and cents on every single benefit that you gain from uh, having native grasses on your property. The top ones are, uh, you're way more resilient with this extreme weather we've been having. These droughts, we kind of coast through these droughts because we have enough warm season grass to uh, get us through the summer grazing season. I just know people after uh, just all kinds of farmers that have had ex just ridiculous hay bills um, this year and last year. And uh, we really didn't feed any more bales last winter than we normally do. And it's because of the way we manage with warm season grasses. And Yeah, when we first started um, our first establishment in 1999, we knew wildlife was going to be a benefit, but that wasn't our priority. I mean, we, we have to be sustainable. We have to be profitable to stay in business. So we was trying to fill in that summer slump on our fescue grasses. And that's why we started looking at it pretty hard. You know, if you look at it on an arc curve, you know, the, the fescue goes dormant in July and August, and this stuff is just flourishing. Um, and we wanted to fill in that curve and, and that checked all the boxes for us. It's about finding that really good balance. A, a livestock producer needs to maintain daily gains on their animals. They need to have conception rates that add to their profit, not take away from it. They need cows that are gonna be healthy so that you are again, adding to your profits, not taking away from it. When we incorporate native warm season grasses into this, we have a high producing forage that maximizes the potential of the land, gives you food that you can rely on, not only in the hottest parts of the summer, but in extreme droughts. While they evolved for tens of thousands of years with this kind of climate changing ever, you know, so many decades, so many centuries, so many millennia, so they are resilient, very well adapted to what nature throws at them. Maybe uh, it'll get hotter further north than it used to, not drier, but uh, they're acclimated to that and they will adapt. So what you think, Chad? I think it's looking good. How about you? We love it. You know, we've, we've had a really hot summer this summer. And it's, uh, you know, there was days we hit heat indexes over 100 plus, 120. You come back here, this group of heifers, they'd be standing out here, middle of this field grazing. That body temperature oh. went down. So this is some of your little blue stem. Went to seed for us this year. It has, it has. One of the nice things about little blue stem, 
too is it'll hold this green foliage a little bit longer than the big blue stem and Indian grass will. You know, when we see big improvements with our cattle, um, conception rate, we, we develop all of our heifers back here on our native grasses now. Warm season grass has tremendously helped us with our conception rate on our cows, our rates of gain. It's lowered the body temperature of those cows in these very hot summer days. Um, you get them off of the endophyte grass and get them onto the warm season and you pretty much dilute it. The gains are what really sold me. The very first year when we had done a lot of brush removal, we hadn't yet killed all the fescue out. We hadn't gotten that accomplished. But that year we bought, you know, they were in excess of 500 pounds. That group of cattle, we sold them the 5th of August and the truck came and they weighed uh, 905 average. And we had gained two and a quarter pounds a day from the 2nd of February through the early part of August. In other words, a real typically rough growing time for cattle in late winter, early, early spring. We coasted through that and still had those kind of gains. We made good money on that batch. And that's really opened my eyes about the potential. In Missouri, you know, cow-calf production and grazing calves is a big deal. Um, and we look at the total revenue off of a farm, whether it be a, a cow-calf production or custom grazing or stalker grazing. You know, there's, there's really three main factors that kind of tie into that total revenue. That's the total number of calves that we sell, the weight of those calves when we sell them, and then the dollar per pound that we get when we sell those calves. Native grasses have the potential to increase all three of those. We're lowering our, our supplement costs, we're lo lowering or eliminating our fertilizer costs, and at the same time, we're more drought resilient, which is a really big deal. Native grasses can bring the, the moisture up from deep down in the soil, keep us grazing, keep our calves gaining, and really affect our bottom line, affect our revenue, and affect our profit. My job is great. I get to work with producers. I get to work with partners. One of the things that, that's a real joy is to know that I'm working with, with one of Missouri's most rare landscapes and that I'm doing some small part to, to restore that landscape, to bring those species that rely on this landscape back to some certain level to give them a chance and cattlemen at least take a look at this, a serious look at, at doing just a portion of their farm in warm season grasses, not only for the benefit that you'll see from the production side, but the wildlife benefit will be great too.